Little Fox. Visitors in my garden. My garden has many visitors. I say hello to them. The snail takes his shell everywhere. Hello, Mr. Snail. Hello. The caterpillar chews on a leaf. Hello, Mrs. Caterpillar. Hello. The ant takes some food to his family. Hello, Mr. Ant. Hello. The spider hangs from her web. Hello, Mrs. Spider. Hello. The ladybug crawls on the bush. Hello, Mrs. Ladybug. Hello. The bees buzz around the flowers. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Bee. Hello. Hello. I like all the visitors in my garden. Worker bees make honey. Who makes honey? Honey bees do, of course. But making honey is a special job for worker honeybees. How do these bees make honey? They do it together. Older worker bees leave the hive early in the morning. Their job is to gather nectar from flowers. They suck the nectar with their long, straw-like tongues. Then they store it in their honey stomachs. Honey bees have two stomachs. The normal stomach digests food. But the honey stomach is just for storing nectar. This special stomach can hold a lot of nectar. Filling a honey stomach isn't an easy job. Bees must visit hundreds of flowers. That's a lot of flying. After the bees fill their honey stomachs, they return to the hive. There, they pass the nectar to other worker bees. The new workers put the nectar inside the honeycomb. Honeycomb is a group of small cells inside the hive. Then worker bees fan the nectar with their wings. This dries it. Slowly, it grows thick. The thick, sweet liquid is now honey. The honey is an important food for the bees. They store extra honey in the honeycomb. They will eat it in the winter. Making honey is hard work. The worker bees do it together, like a team. Ants. Hi everyone, I'm Tammy. I'd like to welcome all the ants that have hatched today. It's our tradition here at the ant colony to meet with the queen on the first day after hatching. I'll be leading you all to her. On our way there, I'll give you a tour of the different parts of the colony. As you all know, this room is called the Poopy Room. 
This is where all of you developed in your final stage of growth. You see, the stages are egg, larvae, pupae, and then adult. That room over there is where the larvae are kept. This is where you become pupae. Everyone, say hello to Nancy, the nurse ant. It's her job to take care of the larvae and make sure they become pupae. Hi, Nancy. Hi, everyone. This room is temperature controlled so that the eggs will all be nice and warm before they hatch. Better get back to work. Bye, guys. Everyone, say hi to Fiona, the forager ant. It's her job to make sure we have lots to eat. That's right, everyone. We leave the colony to find food and bring it back. What kinds of food do you gather? For the most part, we gather seeds, sugar, fruit, and sometimes, if we're lucky, we find another insect. I have to go back to work now. See you all later. Everyone, that's Annie the Architect Ant. She helps build our nest and makes it bigger. Hi, Annie! Hi, everyone. It's my job to dig and make new rooms and tunnels, especially now that we have so many new ants. Oh, my, look at the time. I have to get back to work. Now, everyone, we're going to go near an exit to the colony. Be very careful. This is Susan, the soldier ant. It's her job to protect our colony from predators. Wow! What weapons do you use? First of all, we use our antenna to smell other ants and make sure that they are a part of our colony. If the smell isn't right, we use our stings to attack. Other types of ants spray acid on the enemy. Excuse me, but I have to get back to work. Now we've come to the end of our tour. You will all get to meet the Queen. Hello, Your Majesty. The new adults have come to pay their respects. Welcome, my children. I see that you're all grown and ready to work. Working is very important to the survival of our colony. We need soldiers, architects, nurses, foragers, and many more. But, Your Majesty, what's your job? My job is to make lots and lots of eggs. Wow! Wow! I'd like to congratulate you on your new life here in the colony. Now let's get to work. Lucy's Long Nap Meet Lucy. She is a beautiful caterpillar. One morning she saw a Sally spider. Hi, Sally. What are you doing today? Asked Lucy. I am spinning a web to catch some lunch. Do you want to spin a web with me? Sally asked. Oh, I'd like to spin with you. But I think I have too many legs, said Lucy. That's true. I only have eight legs, said Sally. But you have sixteen. Wow! Lucy laughed and said, <laughs> Yeah, they help me hold on to branches better. I've got to keep spinning, said Sally. See you later, Lucy. Lucy said goodbye. Then she met Anthony Ant. Hi, Anthony. What are you doing today? She asked. I'm carrying food back to my house. I will save it until winter, Anthony said. Lucy was very impressed. I save my food too, but I save it inside my body. That's very smart, Anthony said. Hi, Lucy, said a bee, drinking from a daisy. Hi, Bert. What are you doing today? Lucy asked. I'm collecting pollen to share with the queen bee. Do you want some? Bert asked. 
No, thank you. I ate my lunch already. Look at these leaves. Aren't they delicious? Asked Lucy. Uh, sure, but I'd rather eat honey. See you tomorrow, Lucy. And Bert flew off to a flower far away. Can you guess Lucy's favorite hobby? That's right, it's eating. She needs to eat a lot of leaves because she stores her food in her body. I ate so many leaves today. Maybe I will go someplace quiet and take a nap, thought Lucy. Oh, and sleeping upside down sounds comfortable. I'm sleepy. <sighs> Lucy started to snore. Lucy is sleepy because she is about to make a big change. After eating many leaves for many months, she will shed her caterpillar skin and form a hard shell called a chrysalis. Inside her chrysalis, she will sleep for a long time. Can you guess what happens next? Hey, Sally, have you seen Lucy lately? Asked Anthony. No, Anthony. I haven't seen Lucy for two weeks, Sally said. Bert, have you seen Lucy? No, Sally, I haven't seen her either. Bert was very worried. I think we should go look for her. Do you want to come with me? Anthony asked. Yes, yes said Bert and Sally. They flew and crawled after him. Look, Anthony, there are Lucy's clothes, cried Sally. She pointed at Lucy's old skin. Bert looked at Lucy's hard shell. Why, it must be an evil monster. I think it ate Lucy. He knocked on the monster shell. Excuse me, open up. Did you eat my friend Lucy? Hello? Suddenly, the chrysalis opened. Lucy? Asked all three friends, confused. You're beautiful, said Sally. Thanks. So you like my new wings? <laughs> said Lucy, smiling. I sure do, said Bert. Will you join me for some leaves and pollen? Sorry, Bert, but I have to fly across the field and lay over a hundred eggs, said Lucy. For once, I'm not hungry. All I want to do is fly. Lucy floated off into the distance, and her friends cheered. Bye, Bye Lucy. Lucy. We'll, we'll miss, miss you. you. Tagging Monarchs Um, Cody blinked in surprise. There's a woman talking to a butterfly in our garden. Mom laughed. <laughs> it's Jan, our new neighbor. She studies butterflies, and I knew you would be interested in meeting her. She's tagging some monarchs. What? Cody was fascinated by butterflies, but he had never heard of tagging them. He hurried outside. Jan smiled at him. In one hand, she held a large orange and black butterfly. You must be Cody. Your mom told me you planted this garden. Yeah, Cody said. Last year, my class raised monarch butterflies as a project. We watched them go from eggs to caterpillars to cocoons to butterflies. We also learned how they migrate south every fall and north every spring. So I made a butterfly garden full of nectar, flowers, and milkweed to attract monarchs. That's a great way to help butterflies, Jan said. Milkweed is the only plant they can lay their eggs on and the only food newly hatched caterpillars can eat. She looked down and murmured a few words to the butterfly. 
I always wish them safe travels, she explained, to help them migrate safely to Mexico. Cody thought about the butterfly's long journey as he watched it flutter away. In autumn, monarch butterflies fly south. It takes them a little more than a month to reach the Mexico border. When this generation arrives at their winter spots, they rest and save energy. In spring, they lay eggs before they die. The newborn generation then migrates north. But unlike monarchs in fall, spring butterflies take several generations to make the whole trip north. Each generation only lives for a few weeks. Then, the next fall, the cycle repeats. My mother said you were tagging butterflies. What does that mean? Cody asked. Each fall, volunteers tag monarchs to track their migration south. Jan pulled a sheet of stickers and a clipboard from her bag. These stickers are the tags. They were tiny and round, each one printed with a different code. I record the code here. She showed him the chart on the clipboard. Cody saw columns for recording the sticker code, date, location, and other information about the butterfly. It's too bad monarchs can't stay here all year long, Cody said. They can't survive cold winters, and there's not enough food, Jan said. Luckily for them, forests in central Mexico offer a perfect environment for them to spend winter. And they'll be back next spring to enjoy more milkweed. She smiled. Maybe someday you can visit Mexico to see the monarch's winter spots. That would be awesome. Cody had seen pictures of trees completely covered with butterflies. What do the scientists do with the information from the tags? Scientists visit the monarch's winter spots and search for tagged butterflies. Then the information is entered into a computer database, Jan said. All the data helps to track migration patterns and understand more about monarchs. The program started in the 1930s. Now thousands of people in North America volunteer every fall. Can I try to tag one? Cody asked. Jan handed him her net. Cody watched another butterfly drop toward a flower. He swished the net through the air, trapping the insect inside. He cautiously reached into the net and grasped the butterfly's wings with his fingers. This is a male, Cody said. He had noticed the tiny black spots in the center of the hind wings. Females didn't have the same markings. Jan added the information to the chart. Then she passed a sticker to Cody and pointed to the underside of one of the butterfly's wings. The sticker should be placed here where it won't interfere with flying. Cody pressed the sticker firmly into place. Finished! Great job! Jan said. Later in the year, I can look online and see if any of the butterflies I tagged were spotted. I'll let you know if this one is found. Cody started to open his fingers, then hesitated. Good luck, he whispered before releasing the monarch. It flew away, ready to begin its long journey south.